It was a sunny Saturday in Ibadan and the city was full of life. Jide didn't really want to go to the ceremony, but his friend Tayo convinced him. When they arrived at the hall, Jide spotted a girl who caught his eyes immediately. She was standing by the drinks table, wearing a lovely blue dress and laughing with her friends. Who is she? Jide whispered to Tayo. Tayo smiled. Oh, that is Lola. She is related to the pride. Beautiful, right? Jide nodded, unable to stop looking at her. She is more than beautiful. You should talk to her, Tayo encouraged. At the first, Jide hesitated, feeling nervous, but then he decided to go for it. He walked to her and said hi. Lola turned to face him and smiled warmly. Hello. They started chatting and before Jide knew it, they were talking like old friends. Time passed quickly and by the end of the event, Jide knew he wanted to see Lola again and again. Over the next two years, Jide and Lola became very close. They went out on dates, shared secrets and fell deeply in love. It wasn't long before Jide proposed to her and they got married. Their wedding was a big celebration. Everyone said they made a perfect couple. I can't believe I found you, Jide whispered to Lola as they danced. Lola smiled. We were lucky to have each other. After a few months of marriage, Lola found out she was pregnant. They were both so excited about having their first child. I can't wait to meet our baby, Jide said one night, gently touching Lola's growing belly. Lola smiled back. A heart full of happiness. I know we are going to be such great parents. When the baby finally arrived, Jide and Lola named her Elizabeth. At first, they were happy, but soon they noticed something was different. Elizabeth looked different from other babies and she didn't act like the same. The doctor told them that Elizabeth had Down syndrome, which meant she would need special care. At first, Jide and Lola were shocked and they didn't know how to react. When they got home, the house felt silent. Lola sat with Elizabeth in her arms while Jide paced the room. This is isn't what we thought it would be, Jide said, his voice full of frustration. I know, Lola whispered, her eyes filling with tears, but she's still our daughter. Jide looked at Elizabeth, throwing. She is not like other kids, Lola. People are going to talk. How we will deal with that? Lola didn't answer. She loved Elizabeth, but deep down, she was also scared. Raising a child with special needs seemed so hard. As the time passed, Jide and Lola feeling towards Elizabeth changed. Instead of love, they began to feel resentment. The joy they had once felt for their daughter was gone. She's too difficult, Jide complained one night. Why does she cry so much? I know, Lola sighed. But what can we do? Jide became quiet for a moment. Then he said, maybe, maybe we can get rid of her. Lola stared at him, shocked. What are you talking about? I'm saying we can make it look like it's an accident, Jide whispered. No, Jide, we can't do that. Lola gasped. She's still our child, but she's ruining our life. Jide replied angrily. We didn't plan for this. Lola was stunned. She felt guilty for even thinking about it, but she's also wanted a way out. Taking care of Elizabeth was much harder than she had ever imagined. One day, Jide and Lola decided to act on their dark thought. Jide came up with a plan to poison Elizabeth's food. It would be a quick and no one would know. But just as Jide was about to add the poison to her bottle, Grandma Kike walked in. She had been staying with them since Elizabeth was born. What are you doing? Grandma Kike asked. Looked suspicious. Jide quickly eat the poison. Nothing. Mama just making dinner. Grandma Kike didn't say anything. But Jide and Lola could tell she was watching them closely. After that, every time they tried to arm Elizabeth, something always stopped them. Sometimes Grandma Kike would show up unexpectedly or the phone would ring. Distracting them, it felt like fate was protecting their daughter. Frustrated by their failed attempt, Jide and Lola decided to abandon Elizabeth once and for all. One hot afternoon, they took her with them to a shopping mall. They 
parked the car in the sun and left Elizabeth in the back seat, hoping the eat would do what they couldn't. This is it, Jide whispered. When we come back, she will be gone. Lola felt guilty, but she convinced herself it was for the best. Well, we will be free, she muttered. Six hours later, they returned to the car, expecting to find Elizabeth lifeless, but instead, they saw the car door opened and their daughter missing. A woman standing nearby ran over them. Are you the parent of this baby? She was crying in the car, and I called the police. They rescued her. Chide and Lola froze. Their plan had failed again. The police arrived soon and arrested Jide and Lola. They were charged with child neglect and attempted murder. No matter how much they denied it, the evidence was clear. Even Grandma Kike told the police about their cruelty. In the end, Jide and Lola were sent to prison for their crime. They had lost everything. Elizabeth, on the other hand, found a new life. A kind wealthy man named Mr. Adebanjo heard about her story and decided to adopt her. He and his wife lived abroad and they couldn't have children of their own. Elizabeth was taken to a new home where she was loved and cared for. Mr. Adebanjo and his wife treated her like their own daughter, giving her everything Jide and Lola never did. Elizabeth grew up happy and healthy, surrounded by love. Though her beginning was full of pain, Elizabeth's future was bright and she finally got the family she deserved.